Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. Well, it's that time again. It's time to make another hobo stove. This one is kind of rusted to pieces. It's been a good one. It lasted longer than the normal six months that they last, and they would last a lot longer if I'd keep them in out of the rain. We're gonna use this feed hole cover. We're gonna reuse that, and that's just expanded metal that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. I think you can get like an eight by 24 inch piece for about $15. So you cut a little square out and you take and you conform it to the can and you cut that little bit of a triangle shape and have a little hook to hang over. Not that, not that difficult to figure out how to make the feed hole cover. And then out of the same expanded metal, you'll take and Turn the can on top of it, trace around it, and then cut inset of that of that diameter about an eighth inch for your elevated floor. So this is a Hanover green beans can, one gallon can that I got from uh, Walmart just this morning. About four dollars worth of green beans. I got them up in the pot, ready to cook after this video is over. The tools that I'm going to use: ten snips to cut out the feed hole some a three quarter inch step bit for all of these three quarter inch holes all the way around here all the way around here since the first step on that that quarter inch is so worn out we're going to drill a lead hole with this three sixteenths and let's see i got a center punch here and a hammer to go with. these are the four these four bolts and these four screws came from home depot they were like five dollars so the four bolts are going to be the four legs these sheet metal screws are going to be what the elevated floor sits on here here you know four places all the way around elevated floor sits down in there um you're going to be all kinds of ragged edges so i got a file i think i'll do some back holding some of the nuts with this needle nose vice grips um, half inch socket extension ratchet tape measure and some tape cordless drill it we're going to come up one two going to come up two grooves and that's where the bottom holes are going to be at And then we're gonna come up two more grooves and that's where these sheet metal screws are gonna go. And then on this one, we use the top, I use the top groove for the center line of those holes. For the feet, I just eyeball where the center is at, here, here, and here. And so I will go ahead and center punch those because it's going on a ridge. It'll be easy to get the drill bit started. Don't forget to put a drain hole in here. Like I said, I leave it out in the rain, so it's gonna need a hole to drain. I think I'll do a lead hole with this eighth inch. Now we'll make those, I'm gonna make the center hole about half inch right here. But all these leg holes are gonna be quarter inch. $5 
five sixteenths bolts. I'm gonna have to go to the next step bigger. Yeah. Let me give it just a little bit more. And I like to take where this drain hole is at, take and make like a, make it sort of bow towards the drain hole. That's good. All of these holes, top and bottom, are three quarter inch and they're an inch and a half apart. So, We'll figure out how much tape we need. Put a little pull tab, bend over the end of it. Put it on the edge of the table and mark every inch and a half. It's hard to see with the glare coming off of this. So you see where the two holes don't, the two inch and a half spacings don't line up. I'll just put one right in the center of that, which would be a little bit closer spacing. bury that step bit up that last step is three quarters of an inch and I want to gouge it in there more slowly because I used to gouge it in there fast and it would really leave bad razor blades on the inside it's not so bad if I don't force it in there I've learned over the years I always turn my feed hole towards the wind so there's always flames fanning this backside and look at how much it, it wears out the backside so keeping that in mind that the backside from the feed hole is going to wear out like that you want to put a leg over here and here sort of straddling the feed hole same thing with the uh, elevated floor screws that you want to put those sort of straddling where you know it's going to get weak and break out. So let's go ahead and figure out where we want our feed hole. Let's make this the center. And I think it's five inches wide. 
That's four inches wide. Good night, the sun is blinding me. So it's gonna be four inches wide. If my cover is going to be right here, definitely want it to be from here to right here. It's going to be like two and a half inches. So let's take the 10 snips. First, we'll drill some clearance holes here, here in the four corners and use the 10 snips and cut it out of there. Let's go ahead and take the file and try to knock off as many of these razor blades as possible. Like I said in my other videos, and I have many other build videos, you need to go to my Hobo Stove Build playlist and you can see all kinds of different stoves. You can see more detail on how I build the stoves. Um, even the pot support, I have a video that shows how to make a crisscross pot support in that playlist so you if you really want to build one of these you need to check out that playlist so let's just go ahead and try to knock off all these birds all right let's go ahead and put our legs in it You want to bend these legs straight, maybe even flare them out a little bit to the outside. But look at it this way. This one needs to be squared up this way and bent to the outside. This one needs to go that way just a little bit and bend it to the outside. I have so many people telling me, oh, you wouldn't have any wobble at all. You see, there's just that little bit right there. If you use three legs, I agree with that concept. But what they're forgetting, and I keep trying to tell them, and they, many times they disagree with me, is this stove is too top heavy to have just three legs. If you put three legs on there, the way I slide it across the table with all, you know, with it stacked up this high with wood, it'd turn over on me over and over again. And I just can't get people to understand that. So like I was talking about, you look at it square like that. First, you'll bend it this way or that way, and then splay it out, splay it towards you. Play it towards you. You understand? You'll plumb it up that way, square it up, and then splay it back towards you. And it doesn't matter if there's the least little bit of wobble on it. So we're gonna put a screw in here and here.
here and here. Yep. They're not symmetrical, but I think they'll do better where I've got them laid out. Let's see if we can run them in with our flat screwdriver. floor in there put the feed hole cover in there make sure that the cover is bent right needs just a little bit more bend make sure this is not hitting the elevated floor make sure it is covering up the entire hole there it is that's gonna last a long time. Let's go ahead and burn it off. Hold on. All right, y'all, pretty simple build, really. Now, I did use a lot of tools on this build, but if you go to that playlist, you'll see where I, uh, I can show you how to build one with just a pocket knife. So you can make them as, as extravagant as you want to or just as plain as you want to. So, all right, y'all, I appreciate you joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.